women that gain weight when they are getting older, the main reason is because they are losing their uh, metabolic flexibility. They become less flexible. Can you guys explain what your thoughts are on how our metabolism really works? Uh, sure. First of all, thank you for hosting us. <laughs> it's a pleasure. And when we are talking about metabolism, I think that one of the main problem around it is that people don't understand that metabolism is basically our body engine, meaning if our body engine is not working properly, we are not going to be able to enjoy quality of life. Weight loss is one of the things that also we're not going to be able to achieve that if our body is not functioning well. So basically, metabolic health, yes, one of the main pillar is metabolic flexibility. So a healthy body, which is a flexible body, will be able to shift to use fat when it's in the right moment, but also will be able to use carbs depend on, on the context. For example, after eating um, a high carb meal, for example. So our metabolism should know how to use both type of fuel, fat and carbs, depend on the context. So if we are know how to do that, we have an efficient metabolism, which is a flexible metabolism, which is a healthy metabolism. And then basically we are able to achieve quality of life. We're going to have high uh, level of energy. We're not going to have a drop of energy after lunch, for example. We're going to be able to lose weight. But more important, we'll be able to maintain the weight, which is one of the main problems today, right? Nine out of 10 people that lose weight are not really able to maintain it. Yeah, that's true. Almost everybody either gains all that weight back or even gains more weight than where, than where they started. Now, a lot of people, particularly women, uh, blame getting old that your metabolism changes, particularly uh, at menopause. Um, does metabolism change or do you think something else is going on? <laughs> so first, I think when we are referring to metabolism, so like Michal just mentioned, there's the type of fuel that our body is using. But metabolism is also the amount of energy that our bodies actually produce. So when, we've, when these women complain about their, their metabolism is being changed, both of these to um, core physiological process really change. And it's because of age, but it's also because of the nutrition and lifestyle that has highly affect both of them. <laughs> One of the main problems when we are getting older, especially women, is that we are losing our muscle mass. In our muscle mass, we have a lot of mitochondria. Those mitochondria are the ones that are responsible to how metabolically flexible we are going to be. So if we are going to lose muscles, we're going to have fewer and maybe even um, less functioning mitochondria. And then our body will less be um, flexible to use mm -hmm. fat and also to shift into carbs. So basically, when we think about women that gain weight when they are getting older, the main reason is because they are losing their uh, metabolic flexibility. They become less flexible. Well, I, you know, in, in, in my current book, Unlocking the Keto Code, I, I make a very strong case that metabolic flexibility is really what, what drives uh, long-term health. And that one of the shocking things, and I'm sure you guys know, but even 50% of normal weight individuals do not have metabolic flexibility. And I'm just gonna repeat that what you just said, metabolic flexibility is the ability of our mitochondria to shift from burning sugar as a fuel to burning free fatty acids as a fuel. And we should be able to do that really on a dime, right? I mean, you should be able to do that. But 50% of normal people don't do that. 88% of overweight individuals can't do that. And 99.5% of obese individuals can't do that, have no metabolic flexibility. You know, the funny thing is that our metabolic flexibility, metabolic health, 
is basically determined our, uh, by our lifestyle, by our nutrition, uh, our movement, our sleep, and uh, stress management. All those four pillars are going to impact and will determine how metabolically flexible we are going to be. But at the end, as you just said, 88% of the population in the U.S. are metabolically not flexible. And Meravi and I keep asking ourselves, how is it? Because all of those four pillars, nutrition, sleep, mind, uh, and movement, are under our, our control. So one of the main things that um, holding us back is basically a behavioral change, right? Because if all of us are going to move more, going to eat a healthy nutrition, <laughs> going <Sleep. Well>, <laughs> to be less in stress, those numbers are going to be much less, but still, it's not the case. So what we are trying to bring to the world is that ability that if you are able to measure your metabolic health and see the impact of your lifestyle on your metabolic health, being able to measure that impact, this will help you to change your behavior. So this is basically what Meravi and I are doing in the last eight years. <laughs> wow, it's been eight, it's been eight years. <laughs> so what, what made you want to develop a system to measure metabolic flexibility? Let, let's start there. So eight years ago, you said, uh, we're gonna be famous. <laughs> Meravi said that we must... Uh, we, we had to, to find something that we can do together, so we... No, <laughs> no it was a joke. Uh, we were uh, eight years ago, no, maybe even more. Uh, our passion to metabolic flexibility started in 2008. We, Both of us, we were in our last year of PhD, and we started to compete to our first Ironman competition. Yeah. Now, you're familiar with that? Sure, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so you know that most of the competitors are crashed after, the, uh, after 20 kilometers uh, of, uh, of running. I mean, they are doing amazing the swimming, the cycling, but then after 20 kilometers, their bodies just don't have energy anymore and they crash. And we thought to ourselves, wow, if we want to, um, to do that, we need our body to use the right fuel at the right moment so we will have enough energy to finish the marathon. <laughs> so in 2008, you probably know, metabolic flexibility was not a common term. I mean, at least not outside the lab or in the scientific community. So we couldn't find really um, proven strategies in order to improve our metabolic flexibility. So we started to do many experiments. We used to eat our <laughs> biggest meal in the morning. And we went to six hour cycling on fasting condition in order to improve our mitochondria functionality. And in the competition at the end, we, we did amazing. Yeah, we did very well. <laughs> you know, we uh, compete with very muscular men and they crushed and we just kept going and we finished with a smile. But still we finished and there was something missing for us and this ability to measure what we did, what has the highest impact. Uh, so we would keep put our effort on and what has less impact because we did many things. Um, and after the first Ironman competition, we, we said, okay, let's build, let's take a technology that is already being used in the hospitals since the 60s and made it available to us so we will be able to measure how metabolically flexible are we and what is the impact of all the things that we are keep trying on ourselves <laughs> on us so this is how everything began <laughs> so how did you take the rather large cumbersome apparatus that we use in in an exercise physiology lab or in the hospital and turn it into something that looks like a vape machine. No, no offense. Um, how, how, did you, how did you miniaturize this, number one? No, I think there were, there were two main challenges. One is really to miniature the technology, but the second, and I think it's 
what we are more proud at is to make it valid to take a measurement that takes 45 minutes in a lab that you have to lie down, cover with something like an astronaut. And then you need a physician to analyze the data. So we were able, now we are able to measure metabolism in only one breath. And it's based on a quite a simple technique, which is a holding technique. You inhale a specific amount of air into your lungs, you hold for 10 seconds, and then you exhale. Lumen measure the carbon dioxide at this very specific point when you exhale, which is relative to your personal lung capacity. The holding uh, phase enable actually equilibrium between the carbon dioxide in the blood to the carbon to the air in the lungs. So when you exhale, uh, we are actually measure in carbon dioxide that indicates on the metabolism that being used in your cells. Do I need to, well, no. maybe to simplify, to try to simplify <laughs> it. Our body, right, each one of our cells all the time produce energy and release carbon dioxide to the blood. This carbon dioxide can tell us the type of fuel that being used. Using the lumen maneuver, this carbon dioxide diffuses to the lung and we measure it in air. So this is how we can tell a very, in a, um, um, the set to tell you about your metabolism instead of going to one of the clinics or hospitals and lie down for 45 minutes. Basically, when your body is using carbs, it produces more CO2, whether when it's using fat. So if we could measure what is happening in our blood, we are able to know what type of fuel your body is using. So even when you're mainly burning carbohydrates, sugar, glucose, you, pr you produce more carb carbon dioxide mm -hmm. <laughs> relatively compared to when you're burning free fatty acids as a, as a fuel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even though, even though the, the calories may be exactly the same. Is, am I okay? Yes, exactly. And, and so, and, and again, this is what we do in an exercise lab. Uh, but you're doing it not in an exercise lab. You've worked out an algorithm that says with just one breath, uh, you can duplicate what would take a half an hour in an exercise lab, right? Yes, we just, uh, I think it was a year ago, we just published the validation study in JMIL. And since then, we reached uh, all kind of um, research institutes reach out to Lumen because we actually enable new space to explore metabolism that until today was not available. One of the things that Maravi and I passion about is to develop the understanding of our metabolism. So every collaboration that we can create in order the world better understand metabolism and metabolic health. This is a very, um, it's nice to us. It's nice to know that we keep the research and eventually those insight from the academy, those insight, we can use them and bring them to Lumen users. So it's like, it's a win-win. Okay, so let's go back to maybe a, a dumb question, but obvious question. Why, why would I uh, want to burn fat as a fuel sometimes? Why shouldn't I just burn sugar as a fuel? I got sugar everywhere. What the heck? I might as well just, you know, have, have, a, have a donut every two hours and I'll be fine. Why, why wouldn't I do that? So if you all the time, first of all, if you all the time going to eat donuts, yeah, so all the time there's going to be an increase in your blood glucose will cause to spike in insulin. Over time, those spikes in insulin, your body will develop an insulin resistance. Insulin resistance will cause you to become pre-diabetic and diabetic. Also, when you're all the time going to eat carbs, so your body is not going to use its fat stores, so you also, your mitochondria are not practicing using fat, so you're also going to 
gain weight. So all this is like a circle that <laughs> at the moment that you are starting all the time consume carbs, you are gaining weight, your mitochondrial functionality become less working less properly, and you are develop metabolic syndrome, diabetic and high risk to stroke. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> Please don't eat donuts every day. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with you. Number one, I know but number you're two, out. there, there, there are a lot of there are a lot of people who go, but wait a minute, you know, fat has nine uh, grams, uh, nine calories in 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 gram, in nine grams per calorie, and uh, carbs, sugar only has four, and so boy, if I eat fat, I'm going to get fatter and fatter and fatter. So I. I ought to eat sugar so I don't get fat, but uh, but that's not right, right? I think, you know, what are calories, right? Calories, this is a measurement that we invent. We took the food, we put it, it in an isolated box, we burned it, and we measured the heat. This is that's not what's happening in our body. At the moment we eat food, the things are happening, hormones create. <laughs> things are... Our body is not an isolated box. So when we are using calories, it's not, it's, it's not the right. It's contextless. It's contextless. Thank you. This is not how we should measure uh, food that we eat. The same as the weight on the scale should not be used in order to assess how metabolically healthy we are. 20% of people, of, of the thin people are metabolically not healthy. And they are thin. So there's not a direct correlation between our weight and to, and to our health. So <laughs> All right. So all right. So I wanna I wanna have metabolic flexibility. And you if I if I use your your lumen device. You don't have to. You can develop metabolic flexibility even without lumen. Lumen, lumen can help you, but so how is our listener going to know, just, just sitting here today, whether or not they're metabolically flexible? Because you and I, we all agree we want metabolic flexibility. Um, I, I can't look at my aura ring and know I'm metabolically flexible. I can't look at my whoop band and know I'm metabolically flexible. Um, I can't step on the scale and know I'm metabolically flexible. So help me out. Uh, help our listeners out. How, how, do we, how do we know? Okay. So without lumen, it's very hard for you to know, but you can become, you can, you know, you can, because metabolic health is an output of our lifestyle. So if you're going to eat healthy food and you're going to manage your carbs properly and you're not going to eat late at night, and you're gonna move, and you're gonna manage your stress, and you're gonna sleep well, if you're going to do all of those, you're gonna be metabolically healthy, but you're not gonna be able to measure it. <laughs> but and this to personalize the things that you do. And to because personalize. It, no, because it is a balance, it right? Is. You can sometimes do less or more, and it really depends on the things that you are willing to do, and sometimes you can maybe eat a little bit more, but then to do more of exercise or a little bit. <laughs> so um, you can track after, if you don't have a woman, yes, so you can track after your energy level and you can see how your craving is. And you can measure also, you know, your happiness level because when we are healthy, we have more energy, we are more productive, we don't have this those drop of energy, we can keep our weight, our weight off. So basically all the things that we want are happening. So we are also happier. So you can track after all of those on a subjective way. But if you more like Meravi and myself, when we want to measure and we want to see, and it's important to us to see progress from day after day, week after week. So for that, there is no way really to measure it beside measure your metabolism day after day. And every week, Lumen is providing you with that score, how metabolically healthy you are. And you also, as Naravi said, you're able to see how the things that you did impact 
on your metabolic health. Because eventually, if we will do everything right, we're all going to be healthy. But life happens, right? Sometimes you go to a restaurant. Sometimes she go with her kids to eat pizza. We, we're not all the time, you know, eating healthy and walk out and sleeping and all the time in, a, I don't know, in Thailand, resting on the beach. Sometimes we are in stress, right? So it is a balance between all those pillars. And with Lumen, you are able to understand its balance. And if, for example, you see that you are eating more carbs, so you can compensate it with prolong your fast or finish eating early or let's increase the amount of steps. So it's a balance with, between everything. This is why Lumen, it's, it's not a diet. Sometimes people think, okay, it's a low-carb diet. No, it's not a low-carb <laughs> diet. It's not about low-carb. It's about low-carb if you want to have, to do low-carb. But if, for example, Meravi, she's very, she finds it very hard to do low-carb, right, Meravi? <laughs> so she is eating more carb, but she finish eating early, and she prolongs her fast, and she do more steps. I, I have no problem doing low, uh, low carb. I'm doing low carb all the time, but I'm eating, you know, I, I like to eat dinner late at night, but I'm just making sure that it's without carbs. So our life is a balance between all those movements, nutrition, stress. So that, well, that brings up a great point. So here we have kind of a carboholic over here. And, and then, yeah, I mean, that's okay. And, and you're, and you're kind of anti-carb. Uh, you finish eating early, and you, when do you eat breakfast? When do you break your fast? So usually I finish, I, I finish dinner around 7, and then okay. I eat breakfast at around 10. Around 10, okay. Mm -hmm. And all oh, right, and so on the opposite, you're finishing dinner at what time? Uh, nine. Nine o'clock, okay. <laughs> and then what time do you eat in the morning? Ten. Ten, okay. So, so you, you don't have as, as big a fasting window. No. Uh, okay. So when, oh, so this is great. So, and you've got, you've made lumen. And so, what is your lumen device at, well, let's, let's, at 10 o'clock in the morning for both of you, are you both burning fat at that time or, yeah? Um, I, not but, always, uh -huh. not always, not always, not always, no. not always. Um, usually also I'm taking my measurement uh, after I'm doing a workout on fasting, and then I'm able to shift to fat. So not all mornings I am uh, wake up on fat burn, but it's, it's, totally me, uh, it's totally okay, because not every day we need to wake up on fat burn, right? Our metabolic health is not something that today I have it and tomorrow I don't. We, with Lumen, we are taking your measurement. It's like a snapshot during the week. And we are calculated it and take into account also the context. So it's not that if today I wake up and I'm burning mainly carbs, so today I'm metabolically not healthy. No, I mean, it makes sense. Yesterday I ate, <laughs> I ate more than I needed. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's totally okay. So it's like we want to see a trend and to or toward using more fat and to see you more often waking up on fat burn. But it's not that if one day or I don't know, every uh, time in a while you're gonna wake up on carb burn, so you're not metabolically healthy. So it's, it's, an, it's something that it's much, much more holistic. I, I want to say something about the fasting. You know, <laughs> we find something, I just, just because I know it will be uh, interesting for you. We saw in our data, we have more than 6 million metabolic measurements. Yeah. And we have the log of the fasting time for our users. And we see that women, only women, that are metabolically not flexible. So during the fast, they starting to shift a bit towards fat, but then after 14 hours of fasting, they're starting to shift back into carbs, meaning their body is like, is insert into stress mode 
when they'll stop using fat and then they turn into carbs. But women <laughs> that are mid metabolically flexible, so they, after 16 hours, starting to insert into stress mode. And women that are metabolically flexible, like me, <laughs> I never insert all, almost into stress mode. And I'm able to shift to fat burn after 12 hours, 14 hours, or 16 hours. So it's very personal, all this fasting uh, impact. Now that brings up a question. Everybody is aware of the keto diet. And, you know, you want to burn ketones as fuel. And my last book kind of said, no, 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 it's not what you think. Uh, ketones are not a great fuel, believe it or not. Uh, but so your device uh, is not measuring ketone production, right? No, no. Right. And a lot, there are ketone measuring devices out mm -hmm. there. Uh, and whether or not that's a, a good thing or bad thing is, is a subject for another debate. But I, I think your point is that there's a lot of people that are obsessed with being in ketosis, that it's, it's somehow, you know, the perfect fuel and your brain loves ketones. And in fact, the human evidence on that is, is not true. Uh, your brain certainly can use ketones as a fuel, and that's really one of the reasons ketones exist, because they're small water-soluble fat molecules that can get past the blood-brain barrier, and free fatty acids literally can't get through. But the idea that we should always be in ketosis, um, you're not always in ketosis. No. No. And I, I don't think you would want to be, would you? No, I'm not in ketosis at all. The fact that I'm using fat in the morning is does not mean that I'm in ketosis. Our right? I mean, we can have right. no, that's right. carbs, fat, and then only in a, um, if I will keep avoiding carbs and eat high fat diet, only then I will start to shift into a ketosis. Also, we see one of the problems in ketosis, the way I see it, is that um, when you are going back to enjoy a normal diet, meaning you want to enjoy carbs, so then you are gaining all the weight back because your body is lose the flexibility to use carbs. So when we are avoiding carbs for too long, basically our body stopped produce in the two enzymes, glycogen synthase and PDH. Those enzymes are responsible to take glucose and produce energy from it, or to take the extra glucose and to store this as glycogen. So when we are avoiding carbs for too long, we are basically our body stopped producing those enzymes. We can go back and produce them, but by the time that we will do that, we already gonna gain all the weight back. So this is one also of the problems with keto. Um, we see many of our users that come with very strong agenda of keto, but gradually when they are starting to use lumen and we they become less uh, <laughs> religious, <laughs> less religious, and they starting to enjoy carbs because carbs are not evil. We are getting many good things from carbs. We have getting a lot of fibers from carbs. Just depend the, the type of carbs. So. Not that donuts that you want to eat every day. <laughs> so uh, let me go back to the point that you've noticed with your studies, and that is there's a number of women, let me make sure I'm saying this correctly, that even after a 12-hour a fast, which is actually not a long time, um, that's stopping eating dinner at 8 o'clock and having breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning, and that's pretty normal. Even some people at that point uh, will stop burning fat and start burning carbs, even though they're they're not eating, and 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 that's stress mode. It, does that explain why a lot of there's a lot of talk in social media that women 
don't do well with a ketogenic diet compared to men. Is, and that's a generalized term, but I think your observation is important. Uh, be, because so many people, and I'm one of them, think that we should really aim for a 16-hour, maybe even an 18-hour window of fasting, at least five days a week, in my opinion. But what I hear you're saying is there's a lot of women that not only can't do that, but probably shouldn't do that. Is that, is that summarizing well? I think that fasting is an amazing uh, skill. We just need to manage it properly. So if someone is used to fast eight hours and is used to live on carbs, I think that gradually she, yeah, because I think that the problem is mainly around women, she gradually need to prolong her fast. So those women that are metabolically not flexible, I would not start with 16 hours or 14 hours because they are just, their body is still not there. They gradually need to push their body into the ability that they can practice, the mitochondria is practicing and know how to use fat for energy. So. I'm with you about the importance of fasting. I just need to think that it's something that the, we should manage and we can do it, should do it gradually. The same as someone that is doing high carb, I will not ask him from 30 carb serving, let's go to three carb serving. He will, he will lose it. <laughs> and you know, that in my book, Unlocking the Keto Code, that's exactly what I want people to do. I want them to, you know, if, if you have breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning, you're not going to be one of those people who can suddenly have breakfast at noon and do well. But if I ask you for a week to move your breakfast to nine o'clock in the morning instead of eight uh, and do that for a week and then or even two weeks and then the following week go to nine thirty or ten o'clock and work our way up gradually. Because I, I see the same thing in my practice, that the, you, people who are not metabolically flexible you know, fall flat on their face because uh, <laughs> they, they, they can't. Yeah. They can't do that. It'd be like asking me to run an Ironman. Um, you know, sorry, I'd have to get some practice in. Um, could I do it? Sure. Would, do I want to do it? No. Uh, <laughs> Because I actually think it's really bad for you, but that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> but uh, it's good to your soul. <laughs> there you go. Well, if you've read any of my books, my, my wife was, was an excellent marathoner. And uh, at the age of 50, when I showed her the data of the damage she was doing to her body, she, she hung up her, uh, her shoes. So, uh, but that's another subject. <laughs> Yeah. But good for you for doing an Iron Man. <laughs> um, all right, so let me get back to Lumen. Um, so, all right, how does, does an individual use a Lumen to help them learn how to be metabolically flexible? Because I assume that's really what you want this device to be used for, yes? Yes. All right. So, so walk us through it. How does it work? Okay. So I will say to you, what are we currently working on? Not what is the current experience, because the current experience is much more focused on weight loss and less on metabolic flexibility. Um, the new version of Lumen is that the moment that you download the app, yes, and you have a Lumen, we first of all doing a metabolic assessment meaning we are asking you to breathe in the morning and before going to bed in order to better understand how well your mitochondria is functioning. So someone that is metabolically flexible will wake up when his body is more on fat burn and he will go to bed when he's not overloaded with carbs. So after this metabolic assessment, you get um, a score of where you are from someone that is pre-diabetic to someone that is super healthy, high energy level, can enjoy life, not having this drop of energy. So you understand where you are. Also, 
we're creating for you um, a baseline of your lifestyle because gradually Lumen wants to improve your lifestyle. What is that lifestyle? Nutrition, movement, sleep, and stress management. So we have those four pillars. You understand when you are now, you understand what, has the, what is the impact of all of those things on your metabolic health. And then we are walking through, we are walking you through uh, a journey of weeks. For example, we are giving you each week, what is the focus of that week? For example, I know that Meravi, she's overeating carbs. So the first week will be Meravi, let's reduce the amount of carbs in that week. And at the end of the week, let's see what has the impact, what was the impact of what you did on your metabolic health. So by having this biofeedback, so Meravi is now see what is the impact and she's much more encouraged to keep changing her behavior. Um, then after those weeks in which we are helping you to improve a healthy lifestyle, as Meravi said before, eventually it's a balance, right? Not all my life I'm going to live in a plan. Okay, this week let's focus on low carb and next week let's focus on eating finish early. This is no, not how I live my life today. I live my life today as this is a balance of those four of those pillars. Every day I wake up in the morning and I breathe into Lumen and Lumen, this, uh, this metabolic measurement in the morning is sensitive to lifestyle. This is Meravi model. <laughs> so by tracking your metabolism every day and by tracking your data, your lifestyle data, we all the time can make sure that you're on the right track. And if not, we can say, Meravi, pay attention. Yesterday you ate three days, in the last three days you're eating uh, too much. You are starting to decrease your metabolic health. Let's improve it by increase the amount of steps. So we are constantly measuring your metabolic health, your metabolic flexibility, and we are constantly measure the impact of your lifestyle on that. And by that, we all the time can navigate you towards what the things that you should do better, what the things that you should keep doing, and what the things that maybe for now, let's avoid. <laughs> so let's say I do my metabolic assessment and I'm, I'm burning carbs in the morning and I'm burning carbs at night. Mm -hmm. And maybe I go, I don't believe it, and I do it again, and I'm burning carbs in the morning, and I'm burning carbs at night. Should I just throw up my hands and say, I, I, I'm, I'm screwed, I, I just, I'm, I can't get out of this mess, and I'm not going to even try. Uh, do, do some people do that? Um. No. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, good. Okay. That people are motivated to... Um, to enjoy quality of life. I mean, they understand that this, the value of become healthier is under their control. It's not like, it's not, there is no magic. I mean, it's our metabolism, it's what's happening within us and what we are doing is has the impact on it. So it's under our control. So I think that they are even more motivated. Now, you mentioned sleep as one of the four pillars, and I absolutely agree with you. Uh, when I was a very busy heart surgeon, um, and heart surgeons don't get a lot of sleep at night because we're operating in the middle of the night and blah, 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 uh, I gained a lot of weight because I was very hungry for carbohydrates. Um, do you guys see on Lumen that when people aren't getting enough sleep, they're much more likely to be burning carbohydrates? Yeah. Yes, we had a user that, ah. <laughs> Mark, we had a user that it's like from his point of view, he did everything right. He did low carb, he stopped eating early, he did a lot of workout, but still, he wasn't able to gradually shift into waking up on fat burn. And once we looked on his data and we saw that he just is not having enough sleep. He slept four and a half hours um, consist consistently. Consistently. And we, uh, we gave them that insight. And once he understand that and he's imp he improved his sleep habits, you immediately saw that shift 
into fact it was it was amazing to see it yeah we are even now have a a research collaboration to um to see how night shift affect morning metabolism so it's i think it will will be very very insightful all right another complaint mothers uh with young children uh don't get a lot of sleep um and what 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 do you say to a mother who doesn't get a lot of sleep that eventually you will or do you have some tricks to, to help to help out offset that lack of sleep so as i said it's a balance right because when you have children yes you might not be able to sleep properly the same as sometimes you know when you have children smeravi for example she had a month when she couldn't do uh she couldn't find the time to do workout yes a month it was six months <laughs> so it is a balance so we have here and the company a mom that also she's not having enough sleep so she's trying to do five minutes of meditation just to reduce a bit the stress and to help a bit to recovery but uh, you know this is life and we are working with what we have so there is no really logic to say to a mom look just you need to sleep more she's not able to it will pass <laughs> she can do in the meantime to pay attention more to nutrition and maybe five minutes of of meditation well i've got a question for you as you may know that i want everyone to go get a dog for, for for multiple reasons including stress reduction and also they make you go walk twice a day whether you want to or not uh have you used lumen to look at the effect of having a dog on no. fat burning and and why well, you need to do a study right right away I will, okay i will add it wow the analysis this is genius I didn't I didn't know that about you. <laughs> I read about you and your books um and about also about uh, your your wife and I didn't know about the story of the dog. <laughs> yeah, I actually well we have four dogs and uh but I write patients a prescription on a you know on a prescription pad to get a dog. And it's amazing uh, a number of them actually bring the prescription back framed and it said it's the best prescription a doctor has ever given me and then they bring their little dog in or a big dog in and yeah i have a dog what <laughs> so, there you go all right so and and you don't so we're going to have a test here maybe maybe that's why you need more carbohydrates <laughs> I, i think that's it. so Can you so you have a lot of data and can you share some research or success stories for instance the person who wasn't sleeping enough um uh, I mean what are you learning about what this device can do You want maybe you want to share about the Ichilov study maybe <laughs> Well it is not uh, um this is a really interesting um clinical study that we've done on pre-diabetic patients uh we took um um it was a, a cohort of 30 people in around their 50 from the the endocrinological department here and the top hospitals in Israel recruited them and they used lumen for three uh for three months and we measured their um health at the beginning uh health biomarkers such as hdl triglyceridin fasting hba1c um weight circumference body fat everything and then after three months you can see how really it was very exciting to see how they uh they improved their health they reduced their hba1c they lost weight triglyceridin everything so um only by using lumen now again like michali said it's not that lumen is a medication but it definitely the the biofeedback and the sense of control and the fact that you can see what you've done and how it's affect and it you it, you it keeps you um encourage you to continue 
Um, and another really interesting thing that we've noticed is the connection between phases in the monthly cycle to metabolism. Uh, it was about, I think, thousands of women who logged their monthly cycle. And you can see how their metabolism is shifted and how when you compare it to the amount of carb that they consume, you can see that in the very specific phases of the monthly cycle, we tend to consume more carbohydrate. It was um, very exciting to see. We are like a huge research institute. Lumen has more than 6 million metabolic measurements and their contexts. Lumen so. is built on, uh, on synergy between users <laughs> and us. So by them providing us data, we are able to analyze and to give them back more insight. And basically, this is how everything began, because Merafi and myself, we built the first prototype only to ourselves. We didn't plan to have Lumen, right? <laughs> and we asked from family and friends to start breeding to our prototype because we needed uh, a validation. We needed data to make sure that our method is, is correct. And then once we started with family and friends, suddenly uh, those friends said, wow, um, it's really interesting. Can, can, I, I, use I, can I use it? And then we needed more data. So we recruit like better testers. Can you please breed mm -hmm. so we can validate the measurement? And they also said, oh, wow, but this is very cool. C can we get it? Can we also use it? And gradually, <laughs> this is also how Lumen is built today. <laughs> we are really, we are even asking in the community. We have an amazing community at Lumen. We are asking, th asking them to log different things so we can get data to better understand metabolism and to give it back to our users and to, to the world will be able to better understand metabolic health. So it's, it's very exciting for Meravi and myself because for us, we are still doing research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, now I gotta ask, since you brought up the, the cycle, um, so when in, in, in the cycle, is it the ovulation cycle when women eat, want more carbohydrates? <laughs> or do you remember? Yeah. yeah. Which, well, which makes evolutionary sense. Um, because I see that in my patients, particularly in, in, in very thin women who uh, can't get pregnant or don't even ovulate because you don't carry enough fat stores to actually think you're, you know, you, if you starved and you were pregnant, that's not good. But yeah, so, you know, you want to actually add fat at the time of ovulation. Uh, you know, just in case. Uh, so that's very interesting. So what, so what you're saying, and maybe the whole take home of, of this whole hour is it's okay once a month in your ovulation cycle, you're going to crave carbs and don't fight it. Is that, is that a good message? Yes. And even you guys would, that's okay. So don't, don't go, don't go against your biologic design. All right, you heard it here first. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think, that's a, I think that's exciting research because so many times, you know, we shame people's behavior and, oh, you know, shame on you for wanting those carbohydrates, shame. You have to be low carb. No, I think really, I, I really do think we have to listen to our body. It's think our hormonal. We do need right, to, to also to pay attention, you know, when you eat carb, not to eat it too much, but those all those strict guidelines, it's very difficult to follow. It's not, it's very difficult to stick with. And we should just, you know, balance life. <laughs> So let me ask you one thing before we go. Have you, have your users, are they astute enough to say, when I have a cup of coffee in the morning, I burn sugar instead of fat, or I, you know, I, I have tea in the morning and I burn fat instead of sugar, or is, is it that sophisticated? Because 
Some people have noticed that coffee makes their blood sugar go up a little bit. And that if you put cinnamon in your coffee, uh, it keeps it down. But uh, do people track that with Lumen? So people track after, uh, after workout. So they take a measurement before and after to see whether their body shift. And by that, they even optimizing the type of workout. They take a measurement also before the workout to make sure that they have enough energy. So if, for example, I am now going to do a heat workout, high intensity, they want to make sure that they have carbs. And if not, so they are taking a banana or something like that. Interesting. Okay. People tracking after the fasting. So they starting the fast and they take a measurement during the fast to see when, when they should stop fasting in order to see they looking for, uh, for that shift. Um, people see, we have just now a uh, post in the community. Someone posted that, um, guys, this is super important, the quality of your food. I thought that it's only about counting macros and counting, counting carbs, but she said that at the moment that she started to pay attention to the quality of their food, of her food, she immediately started to shift into fat. So this is something that is more about the habit that she track and less about snapshot of pre-post workout or during the fast. So those are the things. Also sleep. People also tracking about, about sleep with Lumen. So they want to make sure that they are okay. Make sure to check out the next one here. So sugar in and of itself absolutely whacks your immune system's ability to protect you from bacteria and viruses.